Sega's Model 1 and 2 arcade games are some of my favourites ever, and AM2 led by Yu Suzuki developed arguably the best one. But they didn't just push the boundary of technology in the mid 90s, they also made pioneering hits a decade earlier with the big four super scalers. These were four games that launched Suzuki and AM2 to stardom by scaling and rotating thousands of sprites at incredible speeds inside the first Tycoon arcade machines. Fully hydraulic cabinets with surround sound that immerse players in a full body experience. I've been lucky enough to play all four of these Tycoon cabinets in the arcade, but surely the experience of playing these massive machines could never be faithfully replicated on home consoles. So in this first in a series of videos, I'm looking at how well Sega managed to port the big four onto each generation of console, starting of course with the Sega Master System. Really, could an 8-bit home console come close to replicating what were cutting edge arcade games? Let's have a look. First up is Hang On, the motorbike racer from 1985 that launched Yu Suzuki to stardom. It was also the first Tycoon cabinet, with the arcade monitor installed inside a full-size replica motorbike, a dream of Suzuki's from extensively testing motorbikes for the game. But enough preamble, let's compare it to the Master System port. Although it was a launch game, Hang On still makes for a nice looking if slightly bland Master System game. There's little animation for your rider, and none for them falling off, just a cheap looking explosion but it does an admirable job of capturing the speed of the arcade game. The sprites are shrunk down, and how the trackside detail and other riders resize depending on their distance from you is quite choppy because the Master System didn't actually have any scaling hardware in it. But it does an admirable job even with these limitations. Gameplay is largely similar, although you now select from a series of stages to complete rather than race indefinitely against the clock. And what about the soundtrack? Let's have a listen. Well, there's no music during gameplay, which adds to the slightly bland and empty feeling of the game. This is more of an adaptation than a recreation, and I think this helps play to the strengths of the Master System hardware, and overall, it's successful. The next game in the Big Four is Space Harrier. Released in arcades in late 1985, it would set the standard for cabinets for years to come, and if Hang On made Suzuki and AM2 stars, then this shot them into space, literally. It received a European Master System port in 87, becoming the first game using a huge 2 megabit cartridge. And this port is generally highly regarded, but I really don't get on well with it. Space Harrier requires far more individual elements on screen than Hang On, and to cope with this, enemies and obstacles are drawn mostly using background tiles, which can't be stacked with transparent edges, so everything becomes very blocky once it's moving. Add in the choppiness of the fake scaling of the tiles, and it becomes incredibly distracting. Let's do a soundtrack on this as well. Well, everything from the arcade game is here, including a lovely 8-bit rendition of the iconic soundtrack, but this game tries hard to be a more direct port of the arcade original, and really, it just feels like too much for the Master System to achieve, and I can't enjoy the game overall. OutRun hit the arcade in 1986 and released on the European Master System not long after Space Harrier in 87. The full cabinet was awesome, with hydraulics that moved the seat as players turned the first force feedback steering wheel across different road surfaces. OutRun on the Master System treads a line somewhere between Hang On and Space Harrier, looking like a faithful adaptation of the arcade game but with clear compromises in order to keep the performance up. You've got all the branching paths of the original, a choice of music and a convincing sense of speed, but there's been a significant cut in the amount of trackside detail and other cars on the road. While this changes the challenge of the game and can make things look a little empty compared to the arcade, it means it still plays very smoothly. Let's have a quick music comparison as well of Magical Sound Shower from the Japanese FM Sound version of the game. Very nice indeed. Overall, I think this is an excellent port considering the difference in performance between the Master System and the Super Scalar arcade port. The last of the big four is Afterburner. Launching in arcades in 1987 and receiving its European Master System port in 98, Afterburner had the most impressive Tycoon cabinet so far. Inspired by Suzuki piloting a real fighter jet, players sat inside a replica cockpit that pitched the seat in tandem with the game, making for a truly unique audio-visual experience. 
the Master System port was hyped as being one of the first to use a 4 megabit cartridge, and this means far more sprites are used than in Space Harrier, and this cuts out the blockiness from using background tiles. Unfortunately, the lack of dedicated scaling hardware really hurts the game, making it incredibly choppy, particularly as your fighter jet rolls side to side. There is very little variation in the scenery and enemies, and overall, this just doesn't add up to a successful port of the arcade game. Let's have another music check, again from the FN Sound version of the game. That actually sounds quite nice. Of course, we are way beyond the limitations of the Mars system by this point, and it's important to remember just how technically advanced Afterburner was in the arcades. But overall, I would say this is the worst port of the big four to the Mars system. So in conclusion, how successful were the super scalers on the Mars system? Well, I'll admit that at the time I thought they were good. The novelty of having arcade hits on a console was a reason to be cheerful. Looking back now, it's clear the more direct ports of the shooters Space Harrier and Afterburner are the weaker ones, and the racing duo of Hang On and Outrun are far more enjoyable now, due to the cuts that were made in order to improve the performance and decrease the choppiness. The next video in this series will look at the Mega Drive ports, a console that again doesn't have any built-in scaling hardware. They need to be far more fluid and less choppy if they want to get any closer to the arcade originals. So I hope you enjoy the video and keep a lookout for the next in this series from the Gamers Garden. Until the next time guys, happy gaming.